Welcome to an enlightening podcast from IslamPodcasts.com. We encourage our listeners to please comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please remind your family and friends to also visit IslamPodcasts.com for engaging discussions on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran, Tafsir, Sira, and much more. الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون واعتصموا بحبل الله جميعا ولا تفرقوا واذكروا نعمه الله عليكم اذ كنتم اعداء فالف بين قلوبكم فاصبحتم بنعمته اخوانا وكنتم على شفا حفره من النار فانقذكم فانقذكم منها كذلك يبين الله لكم اياته لعلكم تحتدون صدق الله العظيم ان تبيت خطبه ان شاء الله i will talk about a subject that may be on the mind of many today and that is somehow linked to the beautiful adhan the brother just recited and the way the deen of allah azza wa jalla has spread already probably every minute somewhere in the part of the, somewhere in the world somebody is calling the adhan or somebody is at least saying allahu akbar this is one word that was recited by the sister in india my assumption is all of you probably are aware of this incident that happened a sister that was surrounded by hundreds of extremists terrorists trying to terrorize a woman a coward man men the coward men who were trying to terrorize a little girl and that girl without any kind of a fear in her heart her reply was allahu akbar and they were pushing her to say the things against allah azza wa jalla or to do the things against the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whatsoever they were reciting they were reciting chanting i don't even say those words not much different than we have the history of islam in which bilal radiyallahu an a slave of umayya bin khalaf when he entered into fold of islam and his master was pushing him to denounce islam forcing him torturing him tying him down putting a big rock on his chest and his response was ahadun ahad there's only one there's only one which is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he was calling him umayya bin khalaf la'anatullah alayh to say things against allah azza wa jalla or denounce the deen of islam so what had happened between ahadun ahad a chant by Bilal radiyallahu an and by the sister in India the state of Karnataka in the school where she was raising the slogan of Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar what was it what has made what made Umayya bin Khalaf do the actions that he did or what these goons or these terrorists who were doing against a weak woman maybe it's a wrong word to say a weak woman She was a strong woman. She is a strong woman. This is why she stood up. And a lesson for us. 
if we are in those situations or any other situations, would we be able to stand up? Can we uphold these words of Allah Akbar? That Allah is the greatest. Allah is above all. Allah is above myself, my family, my parents, my children, my wealth, the whole world, whatever in it, Allah is above all. Can we uphold this? These are not just some words. And especially when you see a sister, she raised a slogan in front of those people. And it's not the Muslim sister we only talk about. If you are following up the news, again in India, on January 26th, a Hindu woman was raped by multiple men. She was paraded on the street. Her hair was cut. Hair was cut. And they put a garland of slippers or ship chip around her neck and made her parade while everybody was beating him up, including the women were beating her up. So this is the state India is in today. And this is the biggest democracy in the world today. Let's not forget that. Now, why is this happening? And what can we do? Inshallah, I'll try to cover in 15 minutes if I can. The ayat that I just recited, these ayat are recited many times in the beginning of the Quran. That, Ya ayyuhal ladina amu taqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. O oh, you who believe, have the consciousness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Many times it's translated as fear of Allah. It is about consciousness. Whatever action you're doing, you're aware of Allah Azza wa Jal, that Allah is watching, Allah is listening, Allah is the one who's going to hold us accountable for all the actions that we're undertaking. So when we are undertaking any action, be aware of that. Have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not die except in the state of Islam. That's what we are reciting. On the day every khutbah you hear these ayat. And then Allah subhanahu talks about وَعَتَصِبُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on to the rope of Allah Azza wa Jal and do not get into differences. And these ayat, this specific ayat, as the Mufasri talk about, is also referred to the Aws and Khazraj prior to Islam. That they were fighting with each other. And Islam came and brought their hearts together. And they were about to enter into the pit of fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that فَانْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا That we are the one who protected you to enter from it. Now, looking at the world at large, we are in the month of February. People are celebrating Black History Month. And we understand why this month has been celebrated. We should be questioning why, should we even celebrate the day or not? To think about it. And this is what all of us here, especially in the university, we should be critical thinkers here. We should not be the one who just follow blindly. Things are mentioned in front of them, they should be thinkers, they should evaluate those things. Are these the right things to do? When you talk about Islam also, learn about Islam. Are we really following Islam? Or are we just following our ancestors or cultural things that we're following, we have no clue if they're linked to Islam or not. If that's the case, that kind of a deen, the following the deen like that, does not go too far. That does not produce personality like the one who, one who raised the slogans like Ahadun Ahad or Allahu Akbar in Karnataka. But if you want to have personality like Bilal, radiallahu an, or the personality like Abdullah bin Mas'ud, who recited the Quran the first time in the Haram and he was beaten up by all Meccans at that time. Or the family like Ali Yasir. To be like them, it takes a man or a woman to understand the deen comprehensively in a sense they are convinced what they are following is the right thing. To have confidence in the deen that we are following. That confidence cannot come Unless we have conviction in what we are following. We have conviction in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal that this is the book from the creator of the heavens and the earth. It is not I'm following because my parents said so, or the alim said so, or everybody around says so. And if I'm not saying those things, then I will not be part of a clique. 
This is not the reason. It is because it is the truth. It is the haq. And that's what made Bilal what Bilal was. And we call him, even though at one point he was a slave, and he became Sayyiduna. He became our master. Until now we say, Bilal, Sayyiduna, Sayyiduna, Bilal, Rabbi Allah, and we remember him like that. We name our kids like Bilal. We want them to raise up, grow up like Bilal, or Yasir, or Sumayya. And these are our heroes. To think about that. And all these things that are happening, when we talk about Black History Month even, it is the core reason for all those things to be there, is the idea of some people think they are better than the others. Whether it's a tribe that thinks of it, a friend who thinks of it, or a race who thinks of it, or a country, or a place that people are from, or they speak certain language they think of it. At the end of the day, it all boils down to this. Even in the pre-Islamic era, before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were wars, battles happened that went on for years and decades. Like the Battle of Dalif, Battle of Bu'ath, Battle of Fujar. All these wars that happened for silly reasons. Because of a sheep camel was killed, or grazed in a different land that should not be, or there was a race between the horses were happening. The one who was uh, the, the, from bigger tribe lost the race. These kind of silly reasons behind the wars that ended up into battles and wars for years and decades. Or we can see the slavery in the United States because of which now we are talking about Black History Month as if that's going to solve the problem of racism. We have to be critical thinkers to think about what's going on. And if you go back further down in the history lanes, we find this is actually no different than what Shaitan did at the time of the creation of Adam alayhi salam. When Allah Azza wa Jal asked the Malaika to bow down to Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means that al malaika to kulluhum ajma'oon. All the malaika, all the angels together, they bowed down to Adam because there was a command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Illa Iblis astakbara wa kana min al kafirin. Except Iblis, except Shaitan, al Rajim, he's the one who denied and he became arrogant. He did the istakbar. He became arrogant and he was from the denied, the one ungrateful one, the kuffar. Allah Azza wa Jal asked him, Qala ya Iblis, ma mana'aka an tasjuda lima khalaqtu bi yadayya? Who, who prevented you to bow down to something that I created with my hands? Astakbarta am kuntu min al-alameen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that are you arrogant? Are you proud to prostrate to my creation? And now look at his answer. No different than many of these acts of racism that we're seeing, whether here or across the world today. It's the root is the same. What Iblis says, Qala ana min, min nari wa min I am better than him. I'm created from fire. You created me from fire. You created him from pain, from the clay, from the dirt. I am better. That's the core idea. Today, in the racism we see, shaitan is using the very same idea to insert into our minds and start thinking that we are better because what? We are better because we are Arab. We are better because we are Ajam. We are better because we are white, we are black, we are brown, we are yellow. We speak this language or that language, or I'm from that big family. Hence, I am better than you. These are the same concepts that the shaitan started with, that ended up his destruction. And today, the mankind has been deceived by the same shaitan to follow his footsteps and doing the very same thing. That is taking the mankind towards the very same destruction that Allah Azza wa Jal saved the mankind by sending Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the sister who raised the slogan of Allah Akbar, she also raised the slogan because she must have been raised in a manner that she understands what does it mean to be a Muslim. She was a proud Muslim. She was a proud to be the one who is at the servitude of the creator of the heavens and the earth. That's what made her unique. Look, brothers and sisters, sometimes it takes those few seconds the sister had to make her what she is today. 
and sometimes the very same incident can bring the person down. The choice is up to us. But we better be prepared for any of that incident. In very short, it happens to any of one of us. Are we ready for that or not? But that can, that can only happen when we prepare ourselves for this kind of a task. I'll quote you something from Malcolm X. And before I talk about what Malcolm X said, let me quote you Muhammad Ali, the boxer, probably most of us aware of. And he talked about Malcolm X, Malik al-Shabazz. He said in his autobiography, Soul of a Butterfly, I'm going to just talk about part of what he says. He, quote, he was a visionary ahead of all of us, talking about Malik al-Shabazz, Malcolm X. He said, My, I might never have become a Muslim if it had not been for Malcolm. SubhanAllah. Many of us remember Muhammad Ali. Don't know many people who enter into follow Islam because of Muhammad Ali's name. And he himself is talking about Malcolm X. And Malcolm X, when he went for Hajj, before he was involved in the nation of Islam, and he, he saw the real face of Islam, what Islam was about. He wrote a letter to his loyal assistants in Harlem. And it says, quote, America needs to understand Islam. Because this is the one religion that erases from a society the race problem. Throughout my travels in the Muslim world, I have met, met, talked to, and even eaten with people who in America would have been considered white. But the white attitude was removed from their minds by the religion of Islam. I have never before seen sincere and true brotherhood practiced by all colors together, irrespective of their color. End of quote. So brothers, whether it's America, whether it's India, the biggest democracy today, they all need Islam. Islam is the answer for all these racism problems that we are seeing in the world. Let's not think of it only exist here. We know that it exists in other parts of the world also. Even in the Muslim world today, it exists. Why does it exist in the Muslim world? Why do you find even a Muslim, if he sees a black person on the street, and he's driving, he'll be locking his car first. Why is it like that? That is because of, we have put the Islam in our back pockets now. Islam is used for our own benefits, unfortunately. Islam has to be revived as a way of life. And this is on our shoulders now. Your shoulders and my shoulders. To take this Islam and take the people out of the dhulumat, out of the darkness they are in, and bring them to the light of Islam. So they can see the mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of everything out there. And there's nothing like him. That's the creator we're talking about. This is a message from him. It's not the issue of Arab or Ajam. It's not the issue of brown or yellow or white or black. It is about, it is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and returning back to him. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already told us that we are all from one man and one, one man and one woman. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakran wa unsa. O people, he's not saying, O oh, believers, here, he's not saying, O oh, Arab, or Ajan, O oh, Pakistani, Desi, Arab, Egyptian, Palestinian, Syrian, Habashi, wherever you are from. Allah is saying, Ya ayyuhal nas, O oh, people, all of you, all of us here, no matter what size and shape we come in, we are all creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are all coming from Adam and Hawa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not trying to teach us as it has been taught here to us many times. Oh, we don't see colors, we are colorblind people. No, we see colors. We see different sizes. We see people are speaking different languages. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, that we are the one who created you into, as Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا We created you into nations and tribes. Allah is taking the responsibility. Don't think of this way, that if I, don't, if I say I don't see colors, the colors don't exist. No, Allah says, we created you like that. But for what? لِتَعَرَّفُوا So you can recognize each other. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a golden principle that we should all remember. And that's the principle 
that has brought the mankind together in the past and saved them from the destruction and can do it again. As Allah said, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ In front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has ikram, the one who has honor, is the one who is more righteous, the one who is conscious of Allah azza wa jal, the one who has taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ اللَّهِ عَلِيمٌ خَبِيرٌ And indeed, Allah is the one who has the knowledge, Allah is the one who has the ilm and the khabar and the information about what you do. I can take up here and give the khutbahs and to be, oh, I'm at the muttaqi here. <laughs> In reality, Allah is the real judge. Allah knows who's who and what he does. Even he even knows what I am thinking now or what all of you are thinking at the same time at this, po- this moment. So he's the real judge. So Islam has saved the mankind from this racial problem that has destroyed people in the past, is still taking people to the brink of the destruction again. And Islam is the only being, the way of life, that can save the mankind. And when we are looking for the solution, I will just give some few pointers. And I will not make it up from my own mind. Those pointers are from the hadith of Rasulullah and the Quran, the Kitab Allah. Number one thing, let's not get into this whole habit of the moment if a brother or a sister tries to tell us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us and right away we respond back to brother, don't question my niyyah, don't get into this kind of attitude. Nobody can question the niyyah, that's very true. Don't question the intentions of the brothers and the sisters, that's true. But we can question the actions. When the, the hadith says, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ that the actions are dependent on your intentions, it doesn't mean that you commit haram with the good intentions. It means already because the rest of the hadith is talking about the hijrah, talking about the marrying a woman, talking about the business that you want to do. All those actions are halal. But in halal actions, intentions have to be clean as well. So the action has to be right. Action has to come from Islam. Because the hadith of Rasulullah some another hadith that talks about that, that Aisha reported, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he who innovates something in this matter of ours, our deen, then it is not accepted, it will be rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that's coming from outside the deen of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejected. So whatever we want to do, it has to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah said, وَرَبِّكَ لَنَسَلَنَّهُمْ مَجْمَعِينَ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ that by your, by your Rabb, O Muhammad Sallallahu we shall certainly call all of them to account about what they used to do. Meaning, whatever we do, it has to be according to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala as revealed to us. And then, when we are evaluating any of this news that comes up, let's be clear. Make sure that you have the correct sources of the news, one, and evaluate it according to the commands of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala from the Quran and Sunnah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhu al-ladhina amanu, in ja'akum, fa- in ja'akum fa'asikum binaba'in fatabayyanu, an tusibu qawmu bi jahalatin fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimin. Oh, you who believe, when a fasiq, a sinner, brings you a news, make sure the news is correct. Make sure. Or otherwise, you will hurt somebody with the, with the ignorance, and then you will be nadim, then you will feel regrets. So what did you do? And the last... Last two things I want to say, inshallah, finish the khutbah. When you hear the sister is saying, Allahu Akbar, and she had been, she was surrounded by those cowards trying to terrorize a sister. By the way, Muslim or non-Muslim doesn't matter. As I gave the example of a non-Muslim woman as well. We have to feel the pain then. We have the haq, we have the message that can save them all. Not on ourselves only. Of course, we do that to save ourselves. So feel this, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put the burden on us. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلَّكُمْ هُمَّةٌ وَسَتَى لِتَكُونُ شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ رَسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا Feel this burden that Allah has, has, has made you the best ummah, the one who provides the justice to the mankind. And we are witnesses over the people as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the witness over us. Now there will be no more prophet. This job is on our shoulders, brothers and sisters alike, to take this message of justice to the mankind. And don't think the justice will come from anywhere except Islam. There will be naiveness 
Because Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Afa hukm al jahiliyat yabghun, wa man ahsanu min Allah hukm al yuqtum yuqinun." Are you looking for? Are you looking for a hukm, a judgment from ignorance after Islam has come to you? So it must not be deceived by that. Feel this responsibility and be the one who participate to take the people out of the darkness the people are in into the life light of Islam and bring them and show them the mercy of Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatul alameen wa qul qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa likum wa lishah al-muslami fa astaghfiru innahu wa furu Thank you for listening to this podcast Podcasts on current events Islamic guidance Quran tafsir and seerah are available at islampodcasts.com as well as on iTunes. Rate, review, and comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please subscribe, share, and tell a friend about islampodcasts.com.